Hello? Wait, let me see. Uh, perfect. What's up, guys? Welcome back. Um, I just finished my workout and I took a quick shower. Sort of got a little bit ready. I was just playing with, around with makeup. I really, really like this Glow Recipe Ultra Fine Mist. You can use it as a toner and also use it to set your makeup. The mist is just so nice and fine. I also wanted to show you guys a little bit of the, of the filming room. It's not complete yet, obviously, but... So these are the drawers. I mean closets. Closets that I put my lighting equipment. But I, hopefully I don't need lighting because the light is pretty strong. And then all my tech gear are on here. And a little futon for people to visit. I still want to put some artwork here, but I haven't decided I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. A lot of you guys send me suggestions, so I will take a look at them. I just wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about something that has been on my mind, I guess, for a long time now, actually, for about two years now. Obviously, you know, from my stories and all that stuff, I do work out a lot, and I do care about how you know, my body looks and how, you know, I look in general. But recently I've been f feeling like yeah, I wanted to share a bigger part of my life with you and all the things that I'm going through because hopefully it might help somebody or help, might help somebody not feel so alone in their struggles in life because, I mean, I'm not perfect. And if I'm feeling this way, I'm sure somebody else is as well. And it's a really difficult topic for me to talk about just because it's so sensitive and it's so raw and personal. And also, it's something that I... Sorry about that. The fridge was beeping. Um, yeah, it's kind of personal and I guess I... I didn't want to share it just because I'm still kind of struggling with it. Struggle is not maybe the most accurate word, but still dealing with it, I guess. Um, it's about sort of my body image and eating in general, because a lot of you guys do ask me about um, questions like that and how to overcome it. Um, the truth is I, I'm still dealing with it, so I don't really know how to overcome it. When I was 13 to, 13 to 17, I was on the heavier side, I would say, because I was eating a lot and I didn't really care about my diet when I was younger. Like, I wasn't taught um, the right, I guess, what was healthy and what was not healthy. And, you know, nutrient dense foods and all that stuff wasn't really, you know, I just, we just didn't learn it in school. Or we learned it in school, but it wasn't really applied. I went to Malaysian school. So, you know, you do learn about things like that, but you don't really, like, apply it in your daily life, I think. And so when I was really heavy, I felt really bad about myself. I feel like that's how I got my self-deprecating humor. That's how I coped. Um, making fun of, you know, how chubby I am. Making fun of, like how I can't get into certain crevices, I guess, um, or small spaces. And then in turn, I would lash out on other people that were chubbier than me or like heavier than me. And that was when I was like, you know, 13 to 17, which is high school. And I'm very, very sorry to anyone that I used to maybe make fun of. It really was out of my own self like, I'm, like, I was just unhappy with myself, and that's why it came across. Like, I was just projecting my insecurities, basically, onto other people, and it was a very, very mean way to do it. And I'm very, very sorry about it. Um, you know, kids can be, kids can be mean, and sometimes you feel like some kids are being mean, but when you really look at it years later, you realize you're the mean one. And that's a really hard pill for me to swallow because I always thought of myself as 
not the mean one. But, you know, when you take yourself out of that situation, um, it's easier to reflect years later. Um, but hopefully, if you're watching this, just be a little bit more kind with your words if you are in school or in general, anywhere you are. I finished school and then I came to America uh, when I was 17 or 18 and then the apartment, the first apartment that I lived in had a gym and so I was like, okay, this is cool. I mean, it's sort of like a rebirth for me and I started going to the gym more. I um, was really obsessed with reading forums about how to lose weight and um, you know how to cut. It became kind of as a, an obsession and then slowly progress into like my choice in career, which is nutritional science. And I just took a bunch of classes on nutrition, you know, weightlifting and anatomy. And I thought that I was doing the right thing. Like, oh, I'm learning more and more about nutrient dense foods, um, learning more of how to bulk and how to cut. But then I feel like it came to a point where I was 22 and I was becoming really obsessed with the way my body looked. And I think this was before Instagram blew up and stuff. It was, I was still on Tumblr. I would go on these, they're called Thinspiration blogs and it's really, really bad. But I used to follow a bunch of them. Um, thank God I don't anymore and I don't want anybody to ever do those things. But it's basically like quotes about you know, being skinny, being thin, and how amazing it is to be thin. Back then, I didn't realize the power that words and imagery had on myself, especially for women. And I don't want to detract from, you know, obviously it's a very prevalent problem, especially with women, I, I, I see. But even for men like myself, we go through it too. And there was this one Kate Moss quote. I don't even know if it's a real quote or not, but it's something like, like nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. And that was just so strong to me that I kept that mentality for a long, long time. I even believed it to be true. And so I just stopped. Well, first of all, I didn't, I stopped eating as much. Like I, I cut all my calories and only opted for low calorie food, um, which is not a bad thing, you know, because a lot of food in America is set, like loaded with oil, fat, and sugar. Um, I still believe that um, that you should eat a little bit healthier and be conscious about it, but you shouldn't made to feel bad about eating. And that was where I was at. I remember I would, I was like um, bulimic for a little bit and what happened was i would go to chipotle order a huge burrito put everything in it and eat all of it in one sitting including chips and guacamole and after that i would go to the restroom and throw it up yeah um i remember one time my friend was visiting me from chicago and we were at an outlet. I remember that so closely. Um, I went to the restroom to throw up and my friend, I came out of the stall and you know, you get teary and it's just not a great time to be caught, I guess. I came out of the stall and my friend was like, Ivan, what were you doing in there? Or, you know, are you okay? And I think that's that was my first time talking about it or admitting it because when you read about like eating disorders and you know body dysmorphia, you're always well at least for me, I was always like that's not that doesn't happen to me. I'm okay. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm studying nutrition right now, um, but it, I think that's the that was the day that it dawned on me that I had sort of like a real problem um, that I should have dealt with and I sort of just buried that memory and that was a couple years ago two years later I I really didn't process it and um, a couple later years later I took 
these pills were really, really bad for me. It made my heart rate go up, made my, they were like appetite suppressants. Um, so for anybody that's promoting appetite suppressants, it, that's really bad and I don't, I don't condone that at all and I think it's just really bad behavior. So I was taking those pills and it made me lose a lot of weight for sure, but it also made me really paranoid, um, borderline schizophrenic, and I couldn't sleep. And I would take those pills every day for three months. And towards the end of it, um, I could hear ice cracking in the fridge. Like that's how, how not crazy, but like, yeah, how paranoid I felt. Like I thought there were people screaming on the street, but when I looked out on the street, there was no one there. And I hid it from my friends and up until recently, I hid it from my family and it was just a really dark moment in my life because I thought that what I had to offer the world and what my value was to the world was through how I looked and how my body looked. And that's not right because you, if you're watching this, you have so much more to offer the world and your body is just one part of who you are. Um, yeah. Fast forward to now, I am doing a lot better. I am eating well, I'm sleeping well. I'm not on any drugs or appetite suppressants or anything like that. I want to be a, I want to be strong and I want to be healthy and happy, not to make feel bad about eating. And a part of why I want to be happy is because I want to make sure you guys are happy too and make sure you guys are taking care of your own body and you're taken care of because um, when you're dealing with this alone, it's very hard to you know, reach out and talk to people and sometimes it's still like a taboo. And I wanna let you know that it's not. And it's, I mean, with all the imagery of social media and everything that's projected onto you, it's, it's normal to feel this way. I hope you, you'll know that you're not the only one going through this. Whether you're a man, woman, non-binary, whatever you identify as, like, it's very, very, it's very, very real. And a lot of people at DM me, even close friends, ask me how I deal with it and how I've been dealing with it. And honestly, I think I'm still dealing with it, but it's been a lot better. Um, I think the first thing you can do, the easiest thing you can do is educate yourself on food. Educate yourself on what's nutrient-dense food. What is, where does this food come from? Uh, why are you eating this? Not to the point where like, oh, this food is bad, don't eat it. Uh, or this food is really good, like overdose on it. No, it's all about balance and knowing your balance and your body and seeing how your body reacts to things. Don't go overboard with anything. If you're starting a new diet, make sure you're transitioning it slowly. Um, eat, a, eat a diet full with fruits and veggies, full of fiber, and it can nourish your body. And it was at the point, at one point, like, one point that I hated looking in the mirror. When I would walk past a mirror, I would cover my face with, like, longer hair because I felt so ashamed of how I looked. I don't want anyone to feel that way. Like, shame is such a powerful, powerful, like, thing, you know? I don't want to say powerful, maybe dangerous is the, the better word for it. It's such a dangerous thing. It, like, eats away at your self-esteem. And it makes you feel like, it made me feel like I was less, less capable than anybody that was, like, skinny or fit or, you know. But it's not true. Another way that I have dealt with it is that I started seeing my body as my friend. I know it's like a weird thing to say, but you know, your body has been with you till now. You know, the whole way. Your body is a vessel. Your body carries your soul. It carries all your emotions and your feelings. It carries all your memories as a human being. And you should treat it well, you know, take care of it. Groom it. Um, feed it good food, like healthy food. Make sure it's 
taken care of. Make sure you're not abusing your body because throwing up and just and overeating and undereating, all those things put trauma on your body. You're supposed to uplift it so it can uplift you and so you, you can go on in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I think a good balance for a good balance is needed for life. Like like you need to enjoy life. But enjoying life doesn't mean like treating yourself. Like the word treating yourself has become so like, oh, treat yourself to pizza, or treat yourself to like sugary foods. Like that's not a treat because, you know, your brain is like our society wires our brain to think those are treats. But treating yourself, yeah, you can have those things in moderation. But a real treat is really like a good home cooked, nutrient rich food, you know, like. Like something your mom or your dad makes or something your uncle makes that like or aunt makes that's like full of veggies, full of seasoning and flavor, like a good bowl of like soup noodle. Like like that to me is like like a treat for yourself, you know? Wherever you are in your journey of, you know, self love, I just hope you don't feel like you're alone in this. You know, I think the first step to everything is figure out why you're feeling the way that you feel about your body is it the things you're watching the people you're following your friends the magazines you're reading or i don't know if people read magazines anymore even look at the media and the content you're consuming is it unrealistic does it make you feel bad if it does you should try to con try to cut that out gear yourself to people that uplift you uh, make you feel happy, wholesome, make you have a better quality of life versus hating life. That's what I've been doing. A good, you know, if you're looking for people to follow that are empowering, follow Jamila Jalil, follow Sam Smith. There's an Instagram called I Weigh, I think it's by Jamila. That's very, very uplifting. I love all the posts. It's about loving your body and loving every size, shape, and color you come in. So, I really hope that in the media in the future things will get better and they just they don't just feature people that look a certain way and it's okay to be skinny it's okay to be fat it's okay to be anything in between as long as you're taking care of your body and not feeling bad about the way you are i just wanted to say wherever you you are in your journey you are not alone um i love you like from the bottom of my heart i love you i read every single comment and every single dm people sent me and sometimes it, it, this is very time consuming but I really do love you guys and I want you guys to have a good quality of life and go forward with confidence confidence and self-love and self-reassurance uh, which is something I didn't have growing up and I hope you do going forward with your life and not let this be an obstacle in what you want to accomplish thank you so much